Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3D Pay. And today I'm going to be installing a Dual Z on my Ender 3B2. Um, I bought this quite a while ago, this kit, and I'm finally getting around to, to just installing things. So I thought I'll go ahead and install this and you can see how I'm doing it. And right now this kit's $29. I think I got it for $20 on discount. And I said, see how it goes, and this may be an option for you if you're looking quickly for dual C on your Ender 3 or Ender 3 B2 Pro, and then it uh, looks like this also works with the Box Lab renders too. And I'm pretty sure it would work on other clones of the Ender 3, so and the various variations. So let me go ahead and get started. To start things off here, I'm going to go ahead and install this coupler. Now there's should be a space in between the coupler and the motor. And what I'm going to do is look inside here and just get this piece flush with the bottom of the coupler. I'll go ahead and do that and tighten this up. And I'm not going to make it too small. That way, if I need to move things, I can. That appears to be good enough. So once I've done this, look at these, this next step. I'm going to go ahead and install the motor onto the frame. Well, first, let me go ahead and I'll install the holder here on the side of the motor. Okay, so I think these are the screws I need to use. Um, these are round top screws. So I'm just going to go ahead and thread this through here. Get it started. And then I'll get the other one started. So I'll get those going. And I want those nice and tight, I believe. And let's see. Oops, not the big hacker's wrench. Okay. So I have this piece all together, it looks like. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this on the extrusion and the frame and so we can start building up. So let me move things around a little bit. Now they on the next views I won't have the instructions in front of the camera. So I'll just have to read those off camera. Looking at these, it's a cheap kit. I don't expect really great directions, but at least on the first couple of steps it looks like everything's in good English, and it doesn't look like it's been run through Google Translate or something else. So it's actually reading okay. I'll also point out, I should have done this first thing, is many of the parts, where all the parts are numbered, uh, the screws are not, so that's going to make it a little bit more difficult to figure out what's what. At least all the main parts are, are labeled. So let's go ahead and I'll uh, switch over, get my printer up on my workbench. Got these screws right here started with the T nuts on the back. And I'm just going to insert those into the extrusion here on the side without the Z axis. And I'm going to just start tightening this in. So the one side, I can see the T nut turn correctly. So it's looking good. See, this one's turning correctly as well. So I have it nice and tight. Nothing's loose, so that's good. So now let's go ahead on to the next step. So right now, I have the motor secured to the frame. Since I'm using an Ender 3 V2, I didn't have to worry about moving the power supply or any of that. So that makes my life easier. If you were using the Ender 3 V2 before you put this on, you'd need to move the power supply. And somewhere here, there's a bracket to remount the power supply further back. Um, since the power supply is in the case for the Ender 3 V2, I don't need to bother with that. So right now I got this, so let's go ahead over to the next step. For this next step here, I'm going to remove the wheels on this side. And then what I'm basically going to do is put spacers in here and then put this piece. Uh, in like this, and that way um, the uh, screw can go up through here. So let me go ahead and I'll remove these wheels and get that done. Now on the wheels, I have the nuts on this side for 
these two, and then um, what's on this side for this one. So let me just go ahead. I'll do this off camera. I want to point out that I had to take off this whole piece to access the wheel. This screw is actually up against the X axis and you literally couldn't get it unless you removed the whole piece. So I had to remove a screw from over here and a screw from the tensioner in order to move this piece and then off the work to get everything back together again. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put the screw through this piece. I'm gonna to have to thread it back through here and get it all flush and screw this back into the X axis. I wanted to point out this tightening nut uh, this side, oops, here we can see the thick side, I believe, needs to go on the inside. And this is here so that way we can, we can tighten the wheels and adjust the wheels to get them uh, tighter against the Y axis. So, as I said, this thicker side, this thicker side is going to go towards the extrusion. Okay, so I have this piece back on. You'll notice, as I was saying, the screw can't come out now, but you can access it from the other side. There's a hole, so I can tighten this. Let's go ahead and get this piece installed back, and then you'll see what the whole thing looks like. Let's do a couple things here. So I'm going to insert these lar large screws in here. Get inserted in. And then I'm going to put these spacers on. Okay. So I put the spacers on. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the wheels on. So now I have the wheels on, you'll notice the spacers there, and I need to take my original set of spacers, and just put those on like this. So the spacers are holding the wheels away from the extrusion, and then let me go ahead and I'm gonna try hold these. I'll insert this back in. Now, looks like I'm going to go ahead and put together this piece. So I'm taking the tightening nut. I'm going to slide that in. I'm going to take the wheel next, put the wheel on. So I have the wheel on and then I have another spacer. So let's put that on. Get all my screws lined up, struggling a little bit. There we go. So I have it all lined up. And now what I'm gonna do is just real quickly, loose nut on here, just hold it in place. I'll do the same over here. And down the bottom here. Oh, there it is. So that is barely on, but that's holding tight enough where I can go ahead and tighten everything up now. So what I'm going to do is get off camera. I'm going to tighten all this assembly up, and then I'll show you the results, and then we'll start on the next step. All the screw, screws and wheels installed, and what I'm doing is I'm just going to turn this a little bit on the other side, and all these wheels are spinning as I go up and down, so that looks all right doesn't feel loose. So I'm going to go ahead and look at what the next steps are and then we'll start that. I'm going to go ahead and install the lead screw. Down. What I need to do is I have that installed. Go ahead and loosen this coupler a little bit, see if I can get slipped down further. And then I'll go ahead and 
Oh, that's already pretty loose. So I think this is down as far as it's going to go. I'm a little worried up at the top. It's sticking up too far. But it turns out I have these pulleys for the top. And from the look of the um, lead screw can stick through here. So that's okay. So let's just go ahead and tighten the coupler. Okay, so I have the lead screw installed. Now I'm going to hold this in front of the camera. The, with the Big Tree Tech Mini, or I'm sorry, the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 V3, I'm not going to be able to have dual Z's on independent steppers. So I have this cord that allow me to basically put the both motors into parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and install this cord and I'm going to run it back around the back of the printer. It should be okay. Okay, so what I've done is plug this in parallel. This is the wire going down to the motherboard. So that's already plugged in. I don't even have to mess with the motherboard now. And then I'm running the cord back over here. Um, normally, maybe be a little bit care more about uh, wire management, but honestly, it's in the back of the printer. So I won't see it or nobody else will see it if I happen to do a video. So again, these, these motors are both run in parallel. Because I, with the board, I don't have independent steppers, but that's okay. I'm, I'm with this small of a, a deck. I'm not really worried about being able to do. Um, I think the command is G34, so I'm not really worried about that. Also, it means that I probably don't have to update my firmware either, so I'll be. I should be good to go. So everything should just run. Now it's hard to see here, but what I've done is I have a level. I've moved everything to the top. And I have a level in here right now. It's looking like my X is pretty level. So I'm just going to stick with how I have it. And go ahead and put the coupler on the top here. Yeah, so I have the coupler up here. I'm going to go ahead and thread these screws through. So I threaded the screw through. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a T-nut on here. Because that's what will hold the extrusion up here. So let me go ahead and do that. And then we'll get this put on. So let's go ahead and see if we can split this down. Of course, I dropped a T nut. So I may have to mess around with this to get this on. I wound up taking the lead screw out just so I could get everything put together. So I've installed this top piece. And then what I'm going to do is just run the lead screw back down. And it's a little bit of a pain in the butt because it's. All the way at the top, but we'll leave it up there. So I need to put this back into the coupler at the bottom. What I'm going to do is try to move this a little bit. Now, well, I guess I don't have to. Let me just get this in the coupler. Get this all tight and we'll see, see how it feels. Okay, I have my level back up. Everything's leveled out, so I think I'm good to go. Um, last step should be plug this in, and then I'll try running it up and down and see how that goes. So I've gone ahead and homed everything in Clipper, so I, I know it's working. But let's go ahead, and I'll just move the axis around and so you can see it. So I'm going to do 25 here, moving up. Looks correct. And I can feel the motor in the back going. Both both of them are twisting and, and going correct. Let's go down 25. So I've successfully installed this dual Z on my Ender 3 V2 running a Big Tree Tech SKR Mini. E3 version 3. It shouldn't matter with this kit I used, and I'll link to this in the video description. With that kit, it should work with almost any board because it's running the motors in parallel. If you have a separate Z stepper, that's great. You can hook it up that way. If not, you can just hook them up in parallel. So this concludes our video today. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I keep getting more and more questions. I try to answer every one. If you have a question about configuration, Marlin or Clipper, 
feel free to shoot me an email and I'll put my email in my in the description as well. And also send me a copy of your configuration file so I can take a look. But again, thank you for your time. I hope you have a great day.